Huh? I just want to see if y'all really know <laughs> what, what equipment y'all are supposed to be taking back to y'all jobs. I know it's a lot of Charlotte Observer stamps and ESPN stamps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm ready now. How are your shoulders feeling right now? Sir? Can you tell your tape recorders up there how your shoulders feeling? Oh, this feels great. Feels great. Taking it day by day. It'll be ready to go on Sunday. I don't know what the adjective is. Frustrated or is to not be able to throw as far down the field as, as you used to. I mean, to taking you out for the Hail Marys. Is that bothersome at all? Or to throw a Hail Mary? To throw a Hail Mary? To whatever, to throw deep down the field. I mean, because it doesn't seem like you've thrown down the field a whole lot. No. Um, no. Um, and at the end of the day, I would hope somebody would allow me to throw the ball downfield from a defensive philosophical mentality. If that happens, then we'll see. And what I'm not about to do is just go out there and just chuck galore. I think I had my one game this year where I was reckless with the ball. I don't need multiple games. And we just go from there. I know you had mentioned earlier this year when Ian first stepped in for Greg after week one that he didn't know how good he could be if he kept working at it. What sort of growth have you seen in him from that early point when he stepped in to now? He still doesn't know. Still yeah, he's good. He's real good. But, you know, he's still young and, and, and still learning certain things. I think he's more comfortable with the, the, uh, the plays that's given, and it was good for him to kind of – play sparingly and just to learn behind Greg more, um, if, if that's even something to even mention. But uh, it's just, you know, just to see where he's come from and, and, and how fast he's playing, you know, really is a detriment or an attribute to, you know, his, his, his mentality and, and, and where he knows where he has to be. Cam, two years ago, you played through a shoulder injury and never, you know, mentioned it during the season, had to get it fixed afterwards. Is, I know you're never going to use it as an excuse, but it says something you might have to get taken care of again after this season. Amongst other things. Mike. Now, come on now. <laughs> you know Cleveland looking at these tapes, right? So. In all seriousness, you think you're going to have to get your shoulder fixed? I don't know. Can't conform. I can't confirm more than not. But at the end of the day, I just know, um, you know, I'm healthy enough to play, and um, you know, I'm not gonna let nothing hold me back from from being able to, you know, uh, help my team. Um, and I don't definitely want to be a liability. You know, I, I just want to make sure that you know I'm putting myself in this team in the best situation to win football games. You said you'd have to take it day by day, but truly, what does that look like? Because it seems like there are days where it's feeling maybe a little bit better than others, and there are days when you have to do a little bit extra work behind the scenes that we, we never see uh, to make sure that you're up at the level that you expect from yourself. Well, you know, this is the National Football League, so it's a 100% chance out of 100%, uh, 100 times that you're going to get hurt. So whether it's a turf toe, whether it's jammed finger, whether it's sprained ankle, whether it's plantar fascia, whether it's whatever, whether it's hurt feelings, you're going to get hurt. And, you know, in, in this league, you just have to learn how to manage pain and, and, and just take your mind to a place where, you know, it, you're just managing it. Smith, Tory Smith said the other week that everybody, everybody in the league is hurt. There's a difference between hurt and injured. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is that you're good enough to play. You're not injured, but right. you're sore and hurt. Absolutely. Not. I don't think after week two or three, there's no person that's played the percentage snaps of plays upwards of 90% of the time that can say that they're 100% from week two to three. Everybody else from soreness or fatigue or whatever, at some particular point hits a wall or whatever 
where they have to, you know, get a lot of treatment on certain things. Was there a this year that you heard on, or was it just soreness that developed over time? Any questions about Cleveland? Cleveland's had a lot of turnover at quarterback since you came into the league. Um, what do you think it's meant for your organization to have you, that one guy, in place for all this time and not having that kind of turnover? I don't know about the organization, but I can speak to myself and just you know be appreciative and, and, and not taking this opportunity for granted, knowing that you know I've been in this league long enough where a lot of people have doubted and who, from our day, our first day here, who knew I would be here or I would be here eight years and running, you know? So um, this is a what have you done for me now or a recent type of league, a, a, a production-based league. And no matter what you do behind the scenes, it only matters what you do when you're on the scene. And I often say that, and, and, and we're, we're, we're a league that really doesn't come down to practice. It really comes down to Sunday's performances, Thursday's performances, as well as Mondays. And when the playoffs start, Saturdays too. So, you know, and it, it don't matter how hard you're working, fans and people that have you on fantasy, and they don't care nothing about that. They don't care how much you're sacrificing, how much time you're spending away from your family or anything like that. People want to win. They deserve that right to say that their teams are winners, but at the end of the day, it's a lot that goes behind the scene, and it's it's extremely frustrating when you know you don't get the turnout that 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 you want. But at the end of the day, you still got to keep going, have a have a, a optimistic point of view, and 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 find some type of uh, lessons you know when you face losses. And like yourself, Baker Mayfield is part of our exclusive club. Heisman Trophy winner and number one overall pick. I'm just curious what your impressions are of how he plays the game and you know, the way kind of he carries himself as a, as a young quarterback. I'm a fan of Baker. It's not you know I'm a fan of every single quarterback you know in this league, but you know Baker's a, you know young talent that very exuberant, enthusiastic, and and uh, you know from what I hear from him or people who've been around him, you know he's a cool guy. You know a guy that you know selfless and you know is. is Similar to you know a lot of great quarterbacks that has that contagious uh, bubble around them that you know kind of makes people want to be their teammates or kind of uh, attract you know different players to them. So um, you know that's what I I've seen up to this point. Quarterbacks, who do you like for the Heisman? The Heisman. Next question. For obvious reasons. <laughs> 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 Say who? Not Tua. Okay. <laughs> sure in the past, can you just share your thoughts on this year? There's a lot of good quarterbacks out there. Um, but just off of the decisions of school uh, affiliations, I can't uh, really pledge or say who I think is going to win. Did you vote for Baker last year? I cannot say who I voted for either. I don't want to say. I can't say, but I don't want to say. Do you hold it against a player what school he went to when you're voting? No, but I can't publicly say. <laughs> so let's just agree to disagree. I know you, you don't necessarily want to revisit this topic, and, and I understand that, but in 2000, uh, when you had this, the, the surgery, did you expect or were you kind of uh, predicting that you would be dealing with the soreness uh, ap even after the repair, and, and um, how have you managed that? I know you said you you have to learn how to manage pain, yeah. but uh, to be honest with you, my uh, intelligence of of all my surgeries have been illiterate, to say the least. I go in and I say this hurts, and what is going to be the long term fix? They tell me. I really don't really still know and understand because of the many different muscles, bones, ligaments, or whatever. They say they got to do this. They say they got to do that. And my thing is just fix it. So, you know, when they, when they go in and do surgery, um, I'm pretty oblivious to, you know, the, 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 the recovery time. And I would not have expected, you know, me to still have, um, you know, kind of things that's lingering from, from that. But at the end of the day, 
it is what it is, you know, like I say. So it's, it's about managing pain and understanding that, you know, you have a job to do, responsibility to, to put your best product out there on the field, and I want to do that for my, not only myself but this team. Do anything different? Would I do any? No, no. I think this was the best, um, you know, thing that was needed to be done or that needed to be done, and, and, and it was done. And I knew what came with, you know, surgery. Is there, is there at all an internal struggle? And if so, how do you manage it where we've seen you for years really trust in your arm strength and velocity, fitting it into some windows without really even having to use a lot of your lower body. It's been a lot of upper body. How do you deal with that battle of, hey, right now my body's not allowing me to do what I could do at 100% health? You just got to live with it. I mean, father of time ain't, ain't, ain't nobody's friend. But at the end of the day, you know, you got to do certain things um, that, that gives you the best opportunity to you know, be accurate, you know, have strength in your arm or, you know, have endurance, you know, in the game. So, you know, for me, it's just all about taking care of the little things that make big, big sense in, in, in um, you know, in the long run. Simple question, how nice would it be to walk off that field with the win right now for this locker room or for you guys? Is Santa listening? Man, I, I hope he comes early. But, um, you know, I, f I feel like, you know, we're so close, man. And, and um, every week I, I, try to, I try to think of certain things that can get me over the hump. And by, you know, Wednesdays and Thursdays, you know, the previous Sunday is out of my mental. But, you know, there's no, there's no denying and faking that you see other teams in this league that's thriving and, you know, winning – that, that you know you can very well be doing the same thing and you have the talent to do so. So it, all you need is just one to catch fire. And there is no doubt in my mind that this team has big play potential and, 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 and can go anywhere and win. So, you know, for us, we're just going to, you know, focus and put the microscope on this game and find any reason, any chip, anything that's going to give us an extra spoose or boost um, to get us over the top on, on Sunday. Along those same lines, what do you think this, the movement on the defensive side of the staff and Ron taking over the play calling, what do you think that could boost you guys? That's another thing that I'm oblivious of. I, do, I really don't care. Um, I don't know anything defensive-wise that we do. I see it from afar. A lot of times when those guys are out there working, I'm making in-game adjustments. And uh, I just know that you know, I have all faith and trust in, in, in Coach Rivera in the front office that, you know, anything that needs to be done for this team for the long run, you know, they're willing to make any type of changes. So. Cam, to see what Greg has gone through the last two seasons and to now lose him for the rest of the year, that obviously takes a toll on you guys. But what's it been like just seeing what he's gone through and, and now knowing that you don't have him for the rest of the year? That's just another thing, man. Like I say, you know, so much behind the scene work happens and, um, you know, for a guy like Greg, who's such a professional, who's such a positive influence in, 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 in the community, uh, on the field as well as off, um, you, you just hate to see certain things happen. Uh, not saying that you would like to see certain things happen to certain players, but, you know, for Greg especially, um, he's a person that works extremely hard. Uh, and if anybody's owed, you know, certain successes, you know, he'll be probably in the front of the lines. But to see him go down with an injury that you know he's been battling with uh, for some time now, um, you know, you, you hurt for him. But at the same time, you know that, you know, the battle, the, 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 the type of person that he is, the person that he's capable of being, you know this is not, this is not the, the, the end for Greg. You know, for him to, to really mend up and, and, and get rest and, you know, really fix an issue that was, was uh, been lingering for some time, you know, it's only good things in the future for him.